good ship Voyager had been on a journey of exploration towards the North Pole. He was homeward bound. But unfortunately, the icy grip of the northern winter closed in, and the Voyager was surrounded by great blocks of solid ice. Her captain and crew were prepared for a weary wait before the thaw set in, and they could continue their journey home. Shortly after noon, Captain Walton and his first mate, Mr. Boyd, were standing on the deck of the Voyager. They looked out to cross the icy waste. Well, Mr. Boyd, I think we will be here for quite a considerable time yet. There's no sign of a thaw setting in. Uh, the trouble is to keep the crew occupied, Captain. And they're beginning to grumble a good deal already. Well, give them as much work as you can. After all, we were prepared for something like this. We have ample supplies and provisions. I will take all responsibility for my men. And I can promise you that they will all return safely to England. Captain, my eyes. Are they with you, Mr. Boyd? Look there. Coming across the ice. Oh, man. Are all the crew accounted for, Mr. Boyd? No, I've left the vessel, sir. Ahoy there! Good morning. This ship here. Lord, I must be dreaming. This is another secret of my torture brain. I can assure you that it is a ship. Give orders to the strangers to be helped aboard, Mr. Boyd. Aye, aye, sir. What ship is this? Whither are you bound? My men are coming to help you aboard now, sir. Bring him up that rope ladder. Steady there. Thank you, sir. Speak good English. Yes? I wonder where he came from. I can't understand it. A man wandering about all alone out here. The wind and the snow is howling about. And they're bringing him aboard now, sir. Who is the captain of this vessel? I am the captain. My name is Walt. I fear the... It's the special bound. We have been on a voyage of exploration towards the North Pole. We commenced our journey homeward. The ice closed in on us. We are staying here until the thaw sets in. May I crave your hospitality and shelter? Most well, certainly, sir. May I ask your name? Victor Baron Frankenstein. I am ill and weak. Careful, he will fall. All right, sir, I have him. Hey. I must express my sorrow for the trouble I am causing you, Captain. But I am seeking shelter. Then my quest must go on. I must always go on. I cannot die till I find that evil, that demon, which I unloosed upon the world. You speak strange words, sir. <laughs> Forgive me. If I can but crave your kindness some food, and I will... Mr. Boyd, take Baron Frankenstein below to my cabin. See that he is made comfortable there. Give him food and drink. Let the ship's sergeant attend to him. You are giving him your cabin, sir? Why not? You have my orders. Have a hammock slung for me in the cabin. Aye, aye, sir. To we put him to bed, sir. He slept for quite a long time. He seems better now, but I think his mind is rambling. Why do you say that? Well, ever in the north, he speaks of some demon, some fearful monster. He peers through the porthole. We had to use force on one occasion to persuade him to return to his bed. Strange. Perhaps his wanderings have deranged his mind. Do you think it is safe to leave him without a guard? Do you think we should take the precaution of locking your door, sir? Uh, he appears to be a gentleman. No doubt he has a strange story to tell. Has he mentioned anything which might supply a key to this mystery? Or why he was wandering about here in these icy wastes? He said that he was searching for an evil spirit, for a destroyer, a taker of human life. Something about the man which... Make me afraid, sir. Oh, boy, the man could do you no harm. I will go down and speak with him myself. 
Do you wish me to accompany you, Captain? No. I will go alone. But uh, should he become violent... Oh, the man has weakened him. How can he become violent? He struggled with us when we dragged him away from the porthole. He said he must be watching. Forever watching. Poor devil. I will try to persuade him to tell me his story. Wait here on deck, boy. I will send for you if I need you. Uh, after your help. Why was I locked in this cabin, Clark? Why are you keeping me a prisoner? I am considering your own safety. Considering my own safety? I tell you, sir, my life means nothing to me. I wish to repair the great wrong which I have done. My friends, my family, they have all been murdered. And I am the murderer. You know not what you say. Look on me, Captain. You are looking on a man who unleashed a horror on this world. A man who was responsible for the murder of his beloved wife, his best friend, for the murder of little children. Are you a fugitive from justice? I am not a fugitive. I have been punished because I tried to usurp the rights of God. Now I seek to repair the wrong which I did. I do not understand you. Bid your sailors keep a close watch. Somewhere in these white wastes, somewhere near here, there is a monster, a creature who delights in taking human life. None of you is safe. Your wanderings and your hardships have caused you to imagine these things. No, I swear it is the truth. Near this vessel, I saw a giant footprint in the snow. It must have been the footstep of the monster, the monster which I created. Would you like to tell me something of your story? Captain Walton, I do not know if you will believe my story when I tell it to you. Perhaps you may have proof. Perhaps someday you will look upon this monster. Oh, and may heaven grant that you do not. If it will help you to tell me about it, Baron Frankenstein, I assure you I will make a ready listener. Uh, be seated, Captain. I have told you Doc, my name is Baron Victor Frankenstein. I was born in Geneva, and my family is one of the most distinguished in that republic. My father had filled several public situations with honor and reputation. He was respected by all who knew him for his integrity. So you can see, sir, that I grew up in the most ideal surroundings. When I was 17... My parents sent me to the University of Ingolstadt, and there I became interested in science. During my attendance at the university, my beloved mother died. I returned home for a brief while, and whilst at home, I fell deeply in love with my cousin Elizabeth, and I determined to marry her as soon as my course at the university had been completed. I returned to Ingolstadt and continued with my studies. I read deeply and gradually a most dreadful thought occurred to me from my readings and my studies. I realized that it would be possible for man to create man. I became aware of the tremendous power of electricity. I was caught once in a terrific thunderstorm. I observed how the lightning had split an oak tree in half. And the knowledge came to me that just as electricity can destroy life, so can it create. And then and there, my horrible resolve was born. I vowed that I would not rest until I had created a man. This seems incredible, Balfour. Oh, it may seem incredible to one who is not acquainted with science, but I studied and experimented, and when I retired from the university... I begged my father to build me a laboratory near our old home. He agreed to do this. And then I took into my confidence an old family servant called Julio. The man was crippled, but he had a keen and agile brain, and he was interested in my experiment. For months we worked. I intended to create a creature who would be both strong, good to look upon, and noble. Are you speaking the truth, Baron Frankenstein? I swear that I speak the truth. Did you succeed with this? 
preposterous project. I swear a holy oath that I succeeded. I created a man. I usurped the rights of God. Did I say I created a man? That is not the truth. I created a monster. A monster? Why, you might well shudder, Captain Walton. I will tell you the story of the creation of this monster. I will tell you why you found me wandering about the white race. How did you get here? I chartered a ship. I paid a crew. We were wrecked upon an iceberg and all perished save one person. I was the miserable person who lived on because I had to live. I cannot die until I have destroyed that which I have created. But if you created this monster in Geneva, what is it doing here out in the white waste of the north? Oh, I'm tired, my friend. The story is too dreadful and horrible. Let me regain my strength so that I may complete my work. What I have created must be destroyed. Oh, my poor fellow, I assure you that we will give you every care and attention. Still, you do not believe me. The monster, is it here? Aboard the vessel. That was the most ghastly laugh I have ever heard. Open the door. Let me complete my work now. Did you hear that? Stand aside. Oh, we shall not open the door. Mr. Boyd! Mr. Boyd! Humble wants to bring a place Thank you.